Madam President, Ministers and Members of Parliament, fellow Singaporeans, good evening. Let me start in Malay. Saudara saudari sekalian, kita baru sahaja melalui pilihan raya umum yang genting, yang berlangsung di tengah-tengah sebuah krisis segenerasi. Saya dan pasukan saya ingin mengucapkan terima kasih kepada rakyat Singapura kerana memberi kami kepercayaan untuk menggalas tanggungjawab yang sangat berat ini. Kami akan menggunakan mandat ini untuk bertindak secara berhemah dan penuh tanggungjawab bagi pihak anda demi menangani cabaran-cabaran besar yang mendatang. Saya dan pasukan saya berazam untuk membawa Singapura keluar daripada krisis ini dengan selamat. Bersama-sama, kita akan menjadi lebih teguh selepas ini. COVID-19 terus menjadi krisis hebat yang sedang melumpuhkan dunia termasuk Singapura dari segi kesihatan dan ekonomi. Keadaan ekonomi sejagat dijangka terus suram. Banyak lagi pekerjaan akan hilang. Kami akan cuba sedaya upaya untuk selamatkan pekerjaan dan membantu mereka yang hilang pekerjaan mencari pekerjaan baru. Namun, selain menumpukan perhatian kepada cabaran yang mendesak, pemerintah juga harus mencorak hara tuju jangka panjang negara. Selain kemakmuran ekonomi, pemerintah juga mesti memenuhi aspirasi rakyat Singapura yang lebih luas. Kita mahu menjadi sebuah masyarakat yang adil dan saksama dengan pelbagai peluang untuk semua. Sebuah masyarakat yang lebih inklusif, yang menyediakan masa depan yang lebih cerah untuk rakyat, terutama generasi muda. Kita juga mahukan agar semangat kemanusiaan dalam masyarakat berbilang bangsa kita dapat berkembang mekar. Untuk terus berjaya, Singapura mesti sentiasa diterajui barisan pemimpin politik yang bermutu tinggi. Saya telah membentuk sebuah pasukan kabinet yang paling teguh untuk membawa Singapura maju ke hadapan. Tugas kabinet dan pemerintah baru kita telah pun bermula. Walau apapun aliran politik kita, jangan sekali-kali kita lupa bahawa pada dasarnya kita adalah rakyat Singapura. Oleh itu, marilah kita semua bersatu padu dan menumpukan perhatian kepada cabaran-cabaran utama di hadapan kita. Marilah kita bekerjasama sebagai satu Singapura demi memperbaiki kehidupan kita, menjamin masa depan kita dan memperteguh serta memperindahkan tanah air yang kita sayangi dan banggakan ini. Gu 不过官兵将是一个长期的问题行使委托权
才能找到新的工作。此外，阻断期虽然结束了，但是为了保障工友的健康，一些领域要全面复工，还需要一段时间。因为政府有许多方面需要考量，以免疫情反弹，特别是建筑业。我们正竭尽所能，确保客工和工友的居住以及工作情况是安全的，以降低他们感染病毒的风险。因此，我欲请承包商了解政府的考量，政府会尽全力帮助这些公司逐步开工，并提供援助，让他们能够重新站稳脚跟。我们也必须做好准备。一些行业将不复以往，而政府也不可能一直支援他们。为了我国的长远发展，我们认为更好的策略是把资源放在建立新的优势和能力上，开拓新的领域，创造新的就业机会，借此帮助那些面临困境的企业和工友转战新兴领域。工友也会获得协助。接受培训，以胜任这些新的工作。我们的目标不只是度过眼前的危机，我们还必须为瞬息万变的未来做长期规划。所以，我们必须继续巩固和加强基础，让我国在危机过后更加稳定、更加强韧，人民的生活也有所提升。发展经济固然重要，但我们也要建设一个公正、平等和包容的社会，让国人不分种族、言语和宗教，不论家世背景，都能享有同等的机会，取得成功和实现自己的理想。新加坡社会的繁荣与进步，也取决于政治体制的稳定发展。这次的选举结果显示。人民希望行动党继续执政，但也要国会里有更多元化的声音，针对政策和计划展开更激烈的辩论。本届国会将有十二位反对党议员，是近年来最多的，同时也会有指定的反对党领袖。国会复会后，我希望议员们能够提出实质的内容，展开。有建设性的辩论，在重要课题上为选民发声。我也希望看到一个忠诚而负责任的反对党，不仅是对政策提出疑问和批评，而是能够进一步提出具体可行的替代方案。这才有助于国人理解我国所面对的各种抉择和其中的利弊得失。同时，也让我们能够制定更完善的政策，造福人民。新加坡要长治久安、繁荣发展，除了需要能干的领导团队，更需要团结一致的人民。即便拥有不同的理念，我们始终都是新加坡人，都是一家人。新一届内阁。已经展开工作，我们将分秒必争，致力让新加坡早日走出阴霾，和全民一起为更好的明天而奋斗。Madam President, fellow Singaporeans, Singaporeans have just gone through a crucial general election. Held in the midst of a tremendous crisis, we have been through six difficult months, dealing with COVID-19 and the economic downturn precipitated by the virus. I call this election to give the government a fresh mandate and a full term to deal with the difficult months and years that still lie ahead. Singaporeans understood what was at stake. They considered carefully what their candidates and parties had to offer. And on polling day, voters turned out in full strength. They gave the PAP a clear mandate to form the government. 
My team and I are humbled that Singaporeans have entrusted us with this heavy responsibility. We will use our mandate to act on your behalf vigorously and unremittingly to deal with the challenges ahead and lead Singapore out of the crisis. The work of our new cabinet and government has already begun. The elections are behind us. Whatever our political persuasions, never forget that we are first and foremost Singaporeans. Let us all unite and focus our energies on the major challenges ahead. On the public health front, COVID-19 remains a serious problem. The global situation has taken a further turn for the worse, with both new infections and deaths continuing to climb. Even cities that initially brought the virus under control, like Hong Kong and Seoul, have suffered repeat outbreaks after they eased safe distancing measures and reopened their economies. It shows just how difficult it will be for Singapore to keep ourselves free from the virus. And this is why, as we gradually restore economic activity, reopen our borders and resume our lives, we are also building up our capacities to test and contact trace so that we can identify and stamp out new outbreaks quickly. But each one of us still needs to play our own part, stay vigilant, practice safe distancing, and minimize social interactions. That is how we can protect the health and the lives of our loved ones, especially our elderly. At the same time, we have to get our economy going again. This is an enormous task. In the second quarter, our GDP shrank a record 12.6% year on year. The four budgets this year have staved off the worst of the damage. But we have kept companies afloat and minimized retrenchments so far. But economic conditions will continue to be difficult, and we must expect to lose many more jobs. We will do our best to save as many as we can and help workers who still lose their jobs to find new work. The National Jobs Council is urgently working with the unions, business associations and government agencies on this vital task. We will also help businesses that have been shut down by COVID-19 to start up again. In particular, the construction sector has been badly affected by the outbreak in the migrant worker dormitories. We have almost completely tested all the migrant workers in the dorms and cleared the dorms of COVID-19. And we are exerting maximum effort to establish safe living and working conditions so that workers can get back to work as soon as possible while keeping the virus in check. But it is a very complicated task. And despite our best efforts, we'll take a few weeks more to complete. In the meantime, the government will lighten the burden of levies and fees on their employers and help them to get back on their feet. This is only fair to the employers. Many of them are small subcontractors. They are bearing a disproportionate share of the burden of keeping all of us safe from COVID-19. Then there are sectors that have been hard hit by the closure of international borders, like tourism and aviation. Their recoveries will be slow. They rely heavily on the international market without a large domestic market to buffer them. But we are determined to help these sectors pull through as they are linked to many other parts of our economy. That's why the government put aside close to $2 billion in the budgets to support them. We must also be prepared that some industries will not return to what they were before then the government will face difficult choices, and so will the businesses themselves. We cannot afford to prop up failing industries indefinitely or trap workers in jobs that are no longer viable. The better long-term solution is to invest our resources to develop new capabilities, grow new industries, and create new jobs. Then we can help, help firms in the declining industries to reinvent themselves or pivot to other fields of business. We will also help workers in these industries reskill for the new jobs created. We were already doing this even before COVID-19, 
through skills future. But now the urgency is greater and we must redouble our efforts. Beyond the ongoing crisis, the government must also keep our eyes firmly on the future. One day the pandemic will be over and the economic crisis will pass. When that day comes, we have to be ready for the post-COVID-19 world. Our aim is not just to survive this storm, but also to set the long-term direction for the country. We must keep on improving Singapore year after year, generation after generation. Thus, we must press on with transforming our economy and upgrading our skills, working with our tripartite partners. This will help Singaporeans make the most of new opportunities, cope with new uncertainties, and improve their lives. And beyond economic prosperity, we must also fulfil the broader ambitions Singaporeans have for our country. We aspire to be a fair and just society with opportunities for all. We wish to fashion an inclusive community where we look out for one another, reach out to those who need help, and show every Singaporean that they have a stake in our future. We want to make this a home where Singaporeans always believe that their children will have better lives than themselves and the human spirit can flourish. This is the nation we are building together. To achieve these hopes and dreams, our political system must continue to work well for Singapore. The election has shown a strong desire among Singaporeans for greater diversity of views in politics. Voters want the PAP to form the government, but they also want more robust debate of policies and plans. And this trend is here to stay. We have to give expression to it and evolve our political system to accommodate it while maintaining our cohesion and sense of national purpose. This new parliament will have a total of 12 opposition MPs, the largest number in recent history. Ten are constituency MPs from the Workers' Party and two are NC MPs from the Progress Singapore Party. We will formally designate a leader of the opposition and provide him with staff support and resources to perform his role. I look forward to more vigorous but constructive debates in Parliament. I hope our colleagues across the aisle will step up to play their role of a responsible and loyal opposition. Their duty is not merely to raise criticisms and ask questions of the government, necessary as these functions are, but also, more importantly, to put forward serious policy alternatives to be scrutinised and debated. This way, we can help voters better understand the issues, choices and trade-offs. And in the process, improve policies and plans and deliver better outcomes for Singapore. Good politics depends not only on sound institutions, but also on high-quality political leadership. More than other countries, Singapore needs leaders who are capable and committed. Men and women who have the courage of their convictions, who command the respect of Singaporeans, and who can mobilise the population to achieve great things together. In this election, you have voted for me and my PAP team. With your mandate, I have formed the strongest cabinet I could to take Singapore through this crisis and beyond. The cabinet I have formed is a multiracial team, reflective of our multiracial society. Seven out of 20 full ministers are non-Chinese. We have been sworn in before the president with the chief justice in attendance, who both belong to minority communities. There can be no more vivid demonstration of how our meritocratic system works and the lengths we have gone to to ensure equal treatment and opportunities for every citizen, regardless of race, language or religion. My cabinet also includes ministers and office holders from successive generations. The more senior ones have seen Singapore through past crises and can offer valuable guidance and views to help overcome the challenges we now face. 
The younger ministers are increasingly taking the lead, setting the agenda and engaging Singaporeans, for example, through the SG Together movement and the emerging Singapore conversations. They've also been leading our COVID-19 response and gained confidence dealing with the complex challenges of the pandemic. The new office holders will bring with them fresh ideas and perspectives and work hard to master the issues. It is a team that Singaporeans can be confident in and one that will walk with you every step of the way. Madam President, I have spent my entire adult life in public service. I will continue to devote myself to my country and people, drawing strength and purpose from the support of Singaporeans, young and old. My aim is to see through this crisis and hand over Singapore intact and in working order into good hands who can take the country further forward. I ask Singaporeans to extend to the younger ministers the same support that you have given me all these years. But leadership renewal is a never-ending task. We continue to need more good people from every generation to step forward, stand for election, and serve our country. Singapore must have leaders who can take the rough and tumble of politics and who will commit all their energies to work and fight for what they believe in. Only with an exceptional leadership team working closely with Singaporeans can we continue to stand out in the world. We have achieved what few countries have in our 55 years since independence. A peaceful, multiracial society, vastly better lives for all, emerging stronger and resolving to do better after every crisis that has hit us. Let us now come together as one Singapore, keep improving our lives, securing our future, and building a nation we can all be proud to call home. Thank you.